All right, in this video, we're going to uh, draw a triangle and we're going to copy it. All right, so to do that, we're just going to use a, a new tool here. And our new tool is the <coughs> compass tool. Uh, it's very similar to the circle tool with a couple of slight differences. I'll show, show you what they are. The circle tool, I plot the center of the circle, I plot a point on the circle, and then I can you know, move the center around, or I can move the edge around. And the circle kind of follows both those points. Pretty straightforward. Start over. The compass tool, on the other hand, actually, let's start with um, a couple of points here. Our compass tool measures the distance between two pairs of points and allows us to recreate that distance elsewhere. So I can mark the distance from B to A, and it creates a circle that has a radius AB. Notice that the circle <coughs> um, appears with the center on the second point you click not the first point like it does with the regular circle tool. But it doesn't really matter anyway because I can pick it up and I can move it around after that. And I can place it wherever I want, like there. Notice also that this, I can move this circle around, but I can't make it bigger or smaller by grabbing anything on the circle. It won't work. I just, it just moves. See, I can grab the edge, it moves. Grab the center, it moves, but it stays the same radius. I can change the radius, however, by going back to the two original points I drew. So this radius of the circle will always be fixed to the distance between these two points. All right. That's how our compass tool works. It measures the distance. It allows me to take the distance between A and B and create it, recreate it somewhere else on the screen. We're going to use that tool today. So let's do it. First thing we need to do is draw a triangle. So I'm just going to draw triangle ABC here. I'm going to go back in and uh, just hide these lines here. I don't need all these extra lines. We're going to hide those. So now we just have a triangle, triangle ABC. There it is. I can move it at all three corners. And I'm going to recreate this triangle over here on the screen. I'll we'll start by drawing a line. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to hide this segment and I'm going to hide both of these points. Actually, let's leave that one point there. I'm going to leave point D there. So now I can I can move this line kind of up and down or I can move it around with point D. Okay. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate this segment CB on this line right over here. I'm going to use my compass tool to do that. So I'll set the distance, the compass, to the distance between B and C. And I'm just going to place it down here on point D. And now, over here, I'll place a point at the place where the compass intersects the line. And I have a segment that is the same length as CB recreated down here. You see, I can grow it, make it bigger, make it smaller. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and use our distance tool to mark that CB is 1.65 and DF is also 1.65 and they're going to stay that way. Okay. Now notice I can't grab, I can't change it by moving D around. I can move this this whole configuration around but I can't change that length. I can only change it down here because this triangle here is going to be a copy of that triangle when we're done. So this side length we've just drawn is a copy of that side length. So the only way to change it is to change the original. All right, next we're going to create this. Well, it's a little bit tricky here. We're actually going to recreate this distance, but we can't really recreate exactly the segment yet. We're going to use our compass tool again, and I'm going to set the distance for the compass to the distance between C and A. I'm going to place it down here on D. Just for to clear things up, I'm actually going to take that original circle and get rid of it, just hide it. So now I know that point A is somewhere on this circle. It's probably out here somewhere. I'm trying to get a feel. It looks like it's probably out here somewhere. But don't know exactly where yet. So now we're going to recreate this distance from A to B. There we go. Alright. Now I'm going to place that down here on F. So now I know that point A is somewhere on this circle. And probably, oh, actually, if it's probably over here somewhere... It's probably over here somewhere, but either way, point A has to be on this circle. B 
because it's got to be that specific distance from F, the same distance here, you know, I can move them. And it also has to be a specific distance from D, the distance from C to A over here. So if it's got to be a specific distance from D, it's on the big circle. To be a specific distance from F, it's on the small circle. And so it's got to be on both circles. So it's either right here or right down here. It actually doesn't matter which we pick. So we're going to put the point A clone or whatever right here. Now we just have to draw in our segments. There we go. Down here. And there. I'm going to do some hiding. Let's get rid of this uh, circle. We don't need the circles anymore. And we'll go ahead and get rid of these extra lines. We're just going to hide all those. Oops, I missed one. Okay. And now we have two identical triangles. Sorry, a little interruption there. Okay, so. Um, yep, I think so I can move the two triangles around and they stay the same, but let's just make sure that they're the same. We know this side matches that side, right? We can see that. Let's mark the other two. AC is 1.65 and GD 1.65. AB is 1.07 and GF is 1.07. Now, frankly, that really is enough to know that the two triangles are congruent by side 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 congruence however we're going to go a little extra step we're going to check all the angles for the two triangles to actually be congruent for us to know for a hundred percent that they're congruent the side lengths have to match and the angles have to match so that's how we know that two polygons are congruent um, but in the specific case of triangles you don't actually have to know all that information just knowing that the three side lengths match is enough but we're going to make sure we're very thorough about this so they've got a C, B, and G, D, F. And let's take a look. All right, I've got 36.39, 36.39. So far, so good. We've got C, A, B, D, G, F. Okay, check there. 78, 78. Yep. And then I'll do our last one. So far, so good. Of course, at this point, since the three, triangle, three angles in a triangle all add up to 180, we should know that, you know, whatever 36 point whatever 39 plus 78.03 taken away from 180 will leave us with the third angle. We do the same calculation down here, so we better end up with the same answer for the third angle. But, so A, B, C, and G, F, D. Check there. All right. There we go. The same triangle. And you kind of move things around, and all right, there you go. Looks good. Have at it.